Hey Booktube, Sean here, coming to you with my week in books, which again is a uh, kind of a two weeks, kind of more like a week and a half uh, week in books. Two weeks since one has gone up, but uh, I am going out of town, or by the time you see this, have been out of town for the weekend. So it's actually Thursday as I'm recording this, when normally I would record this on Saturday or Sunday. Um, I just was exhausted last weekend uh had a very busy weekend by the time sunday night came and i finally would have had time to film i just was exhausted and just didn't feel just didn't have the energy to do it um and i had only gotten one book finished uh that week anyway so i didn't really have a lot to talk about so i just uh figured i'd wait um but let's get into it um the uh i finished uh now four books since my since the last video and those books are uh i finished fever dream by samantha schweblin and this is a uh one of the novellas nominated for the shirley jackson awards the only thing i have uh finished on the shirley jackson award list which i'll link my video on the shirley jackson award in the description uh, if you want to know what i'm talking about um but uh, Fever Dream is by Samantha Schweblin, and it is translated by Megan McDowell. Um, this, I don't even know how to describe this book. I enjoyed it. I, I, I think I gave it, I think I gave it three stars on Goodreads. Um, but uh, it was crazy. Um, I mean, it, it's called Fever Dream, and it reads like a fever dream. Um I said I I don't even I'm going to read the description for you because I don't even know how to describe what I read or or, or listen to actually I I listened to this one on audio. Excuse me. Uh, a young woman named Amanda lies in a rural hospital clinic. A boy named David sits beside her. She's not his mother. He's not her child. Together they tell a Haunting story of broken souls, toxins, and the power of desperation and family. Fever Dream is a nightmare come to life, a ghost story for the real world, a love story and a cautionary tale, one of the freshest new voices to come out of the Spanish language and translate it into English for the first time. Samantha Schweblin creates an aura of strange psychological menace and otherworldly reality in this absorbing, unsettling, taut novel. That really is a perfect way to describe it. I really can't do much better than that description. Um... The only thing I can say is you really need to experience it for yourself. Um, I actually should up my star rating on, on, on Goodreads because I still find myself... I finished this two weeks ago by the time you're seeing this. And uh, I'm still occasionally thinking about it and processing it. So because it's sticking with me, I, I probably should up my star rating on Goodreads. Um but that's uh, Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin, translated by Megan McDowell. Uh, the next book I finished is uh, one of the Bram Stoker First Novel Award winners. Um, and if you, I, I don't, I'm doing some bulk recording today. So if you haven't seen my review of this, or if my review of this hasn't gone up, it's going up soon. Um, I haven't decided what order I'm putting videos up in yet. Um, but you may not have, I, this one may not be up yet. Um, but I have recorded a review uh, uh, of this book um, as part of, uh, as has the first video in what's going to be my first novel, Bram Stoker review uh, series. Um, but uh, this, this is about an ancient evil that awakens uh, and there's a, a Native American aspect to it. Uh, that is used uh, to help defeat the the creature. Um, it uh, it was good. It was really good. I listen again. I listened to this one on a, most of my all but one of the books I finished are audio books. Um, one of them I have a physical copy of, but I ended up uh, I ended up listening to it. But Crota Crota, I, re I really enjoyed. I gave it uh, four stars on Goodreads. Um, and uh, I don't want to go too much uh, into it, but watch out for my my review video of it. Um, 
if it's not up already, it should be up in a couple of days. Um, and uh, yeah, the uh, next book I finished was The Elementals by Michael McDowell. And this one was a buddy read with Stephanie. That's what she read. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I really enjoyed this book too. Again, uh, gave it four out of five stars on Goodreads. Um, uh, this is about a, uh, a family who the matriarch of the family has passed and the rest of the family, uh, goes, uh, to some property that they own on, uh, on a beach, uh, called, oh crap, Bel Beltane, um, Beltrame, it's been a couple days, um, but there's three houses on the property, one owned uh, by the Savages, one owned by the McCrays. And the McCrays and Savages are have uh, the the daughter of the McCrays is married to the son of the Savages. Um, so so they are all family. And then there's the third house that is owned by the Savages, but nobody has occupied for a long time because it has is being being taken over by sand. Um, and there are spirits that live in the house and they've decided that uh it's time to make their presence known um this was a really enjoyable book um it um stephanie uh mentioned to me that she has heard and i think i've heard the same thing that she has heard that this book makes sand creepy and and that's right. It uh, it, it does kind of make sand creepy, um, but there there was an element of the book that was unresolved in my mind, which is what kept me from giving it five stars. But ultimately, uh, the characters the characters of uh, India and Odessa in this book. Uh, India is uh, the the youngest of the McCrays and Odessa is the hired servant of um, the savages. And they have great character arcs. Um, really well fleshed out character arcs. Um, yeah, this is just a really good book. Uh, and it's, it's kind of a classic in the horror genre anymore. Um, so that's The Elementals by Michael McDowell. And I definitely suggest there's been a lot of good talk uh, on Goodread or on, on BookTube of this. I think it's uh, Katie at Chapter Stack's favorite book. Um, it's it's uh, Vicky at uh, Chapter 32. It's one of her favorite books. It's one of Carla at Carla's Book Bits' favorite books. Um, yeah, and, and I see why. So definitely check out The Elementals by Michael McDowell. Um, and the last book I finished, uh, and I'm pretty sure this review video is up, so I will try and link it in, in the description box. Um, I'm, so I'm doing a lot of bulk recording, and, uh, and I don't know how I, I'm still unsure how I'm going to get uh, things uploaded yet while I'm away for the weekend. Um, I may have to set up my laptop. Uh, basically, if you're seeing this on Monday... Happy Memorial Day, and uh, I was able to get my lap, set up my laptop, and upload overnight, and get this posted uh, when I want to. Um, but I'm pretty sure the Space Opera review was on Friday. So, Space Opera by Catherine M. Valente. Um, I go into much more detail in the review, but I did not get on with this book. Uh, I gave it two stars on Goodreads. Um, it just felt like it was trying too hard to be zany and and the and a lot got lost in 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 that over attempt but uh for more detailed uh discussion on that check out my review video which i'll link in the description box um so that's the books i have read uh what i've been working on um again i'm a little unprepared but I've been uh, still slowly working on Czar of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara. Um, I'm about uh, 88 pages into this. Uh, 
still still enjoying. I'm into the third story now, and uh, and the 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 writing is just is just great in this. It it flows really well, and when I when I do pick this up, uh, I just I have a hard time putting it down. So um, I read. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth mentioning on this because I haven't gotten back to it, but I did read a couple chapters of The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. I was just kind of in the mood for it, but I also haven't been, I also haven't gotten back to it since I picked it up. So uh, it's just one of those things. Um, I have not yet gotten to My Best Friend's Exorcism. I know that's one of the books I said I was going to get to this month and I have not gotten to it yet. I have read about a chapter and a half, but I just... I just haven't gotten back to it. I've had other things going on. Um, I did uh, start uh, last Saturday. Um, I went to, my wife was just uh, recently in a play, and uh, I went to the closing night performance and I dropped her off at the show. And I went and got dinner before because she had to be there earlier than I wanted to be there. Um, so I dropped her off and then went, uh, went and had dinner and started reading White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi and I read uh, like 60 some pages of it that night. Uh, I haven't gotten back to it since but I got about 20 a quarter of the way through it just that night. Uh, I, I, I just I, I couldn't stop reading it. I was reading it all through uh, dinner and then when I got to the theater, I took my Kindle into the theater and I was reading it up to the time the lights went out. And then an intermission, I, again, I, I, I started reading it again. I was reading it up to the time the lights went out and I got a quarter of the way through it uh, just that day or just that night. Uh, and I, and I, do, I, I do really want to get back to it, but I just had some things I wanted to finish up this week. That's why I haven't gotten back to any of this stuff yet. Uh, what else have I been reading? Um... I, I always I, I I just start a bunch of shit and uh, oh the Bone Mother by David Demchuk uh, I'm hopefully getting back to that I'm about eleven percent of the way through that and that is nominated for best novel for the Shirley Jackson Awards and I, I'm I'm curious to see how this is going to work as a novel because so far it seems like stories. Um, so I'm, I'm curious as to how this gets fit into the novel category. Um, yeah, um, but the writing is great and, and I'm really, I've really dug what I've, what I've read of it and, and I'm ex kind of excited to get back to it. Hopefully while I'm, hopefully I'm going to get some reading time while I'm away this, or hopefully I got some reading time while I was away this weekend and, um. And I've been able to dig into it a little bit more. I want to get back to White is for Witching, and I want to get back into The Bone Mother, and there's a couple other things I'd like to start. Uh, I want to start Exorcist Falls by Jonathan Jans. Um, and uh, and I'm starting to get... I'm starting the, the literary fiction mood is starting to creep up, uh, too. So there's some other things that, uh, that I may end up picking up. Um, I started last night, I started The clou Partly Cloudy Patriot, uh, by Sarah Vall essay collection, and that is for um, that is for two things actually. One uh, one is a video to come, uh, I, I think, if unless I unless I got excited and posted it early, because um, I haven't filmed it yet. Um, but it is for the Read Harder Challenge, which I am going to do a mid year check in video on that because I've kind of let it go while I was in my horror mood, but I do still, I do want to get back to it, uh, the Read Harder Challenge, because I have finished, uh, several books for it, um, because I was able to fit some of the things that I read into some of the challenges, uh, that I hadn't previously planned on, so, uh, so Partly Cloudy Patriot is for an essay anthology for the Read Harder Challenge, and it is also now going to be, because I learned about the Reading Women Challenge, um, and I am going to be filming a Reading Women Challenge and Readathon TBR, um, at, probably after I'm done with this video, fi filming this video, and that'll go up. If it's not up already, it'll be up soon. It'll be up probably uh, by June 1st. Um, but that there is an essay collection category in that that I'm going to use it for too. 
So I read the first essay in it last night and I really enjoyed it. So I'm excited to get back into that as well. Um, so let's get to the book haul portion. I've actually only received one book or I, I bought one book. Um, I bought Boy Snow Bird by Helen Oyeyemi. Um, Helen Oyeyemi got brought up in uh, Books in the Freezer podcast interview with Christy Demeester. Uh, Christy Demeester... Um, recommended her a couple times one his fabulous fiction and then when she was talking about horror authors too she rec she mentioned how creepy white is for witching uh is so it, she really got me wanting to really check out helenoya yemi and this uh first of all that cover is fantastic i love that cover that's kind of one the physical book was cheaper than the kindle book by about four or five dollars so i bought the physical book um and and that cover i just i had to have that cover that i love that cover um and this is a Snow White retelling set in 1953 uh, Massachusetts. Um, so I'm I'm curious uh, I'm curious to get into this. Uh, and this is actually going to be on my Reading Women uh, TBR as well. Um, so be sure to check when that video comes out. Out. Be sure to check that to find out where I put that. Um, and I went to the library again, and I got some things from the library. Um, also in that same podcast interview with Christy Demeester, Christy Demeester talked about uh, fabulous fiction for a little bit, which I had never heard of. Um, so I ended up checking out some uh, authors that she mentioned for fabulous fiction, and one of those was Amy Bender. So I got uh, the particulars... Uh, particular sadness of lemon cake and this is about a girl who when she eats she can taste the emotions she can feel the emotions that the uh that the person who made the food was feeling when they made it um which is kind of interesting and then a, a story a short story collection by her called the color master uh yeah the color master so uh, by amy bender so that's the two books by her i picked up i haven't picked them up but uh, hopefully I can renew them and be able to get to them. I also picked up uh, Swamplandia by Karen Russell. Um, and this is a another book that got brought up has fabulous fiction. Uh, this is from the celebrated 29-year-old author of Everywhere, heralded short story collection, St. Lucie's Home for Girls Raised by Wolves. Comes a blazingly original debut novel that takes us back to the swamps of Florida, Everglades, and introduces us to Ava Bigtree, an unforgettable young heroine. The Bigtree alligator wrestling dynasty is in decline, and Swamplandia, their island home and gator wrestling theme park, formerly number one in the region, is swiftly being encroached upon by a fearsome and sophisticated competitor called the World of Darkness. Ava's mother, the park's indomitable headliner, has just died. Her sister, Ossie, has fallen in love with a spooky character known as the Dredgeman, who may or may not be an actual ghost, and her brilliant brother Kiwi, who dreams of becoming a scholar, has just defected to the world of darkness in a last-ditch effort to keep their family business from going under. Ava's father, affectionately known as Chief Big Tree, is AWOL, and that leaves Ava, a resourceful but terrified 13, to manage 98 gators in the vast inscrutable landscape of her own grief. Uh, it sounds interesting, and I know Stephanie, if that's what she read, uh, really enjoyed this book, and I trust her opinion. So hopefully I can get to this while I have it checked out. Um, I also picked up with something I never thought I was going to pick up, because you guys know I'm not a big YA. I don't, I, I don't have anything against YA. I'm just not a big YA reader. So I, this is one I never thought I was going to pick up, but I read the description finally, um, it's been all over booktube. I know I don't need to really uh, go into its description, but I finally read the description and it sounded really interesting. And uh, a lot of other people that I'm friends with who also are not big YA readers are really enjoying this book. And that's Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. And the description, the description finally got me. And, uh, and I'm kind of excited to get into it now. Um, I read I read a little bit, just the just like the prologue and a little bit into the first uh, chapter. And and Lainey Taylor's writing, it is really it is really nice. Um, so uh, I'm kind of excited to get into this. 
Um, and the other book I got from the library is The Night Ocean by Paul Lafarge. And this is one of the novels nominated for the Shirley Jackson Award. Uh, and again, I'll link my video on the Shirley Jackson Award nominees below so you can get uh, a good description of this book. Um, and that's it. That uh, is what I have picked up. I also, I did get a, another copy of, I just the other day, uh, actually, I pulled it out of the mail today, but it, it might, I think it came a couple of days ago. I got another copy of Space Opera in, in the mail, this one directly from Simon & Schuster. So uh, thank you for that. Even though I didn't care for the book, I, I, I do appreciate, I do appreciate uh, it being sent to me. Um, but that's it. That's my weekend books. Um, like I said, I, I, I'm doing some bulk filming today. One, probably only one video you've already seen may have already seen if not uh it'll be linked in the description box um and i got some more videos coming up uh i'm going to be filming that tbr reading women thing uh, i talked about i'm also going to be doing a a um i did this once before um and it was kind of a long video a lot uh, with a lot of me looking at the computer so i don't know how how well received it was but i did get some good comments about the books i talked about so i am going to do um another i am going to do a um a kindle book haul and let you guys know what i've picked up on the kindle uh through the course of the month um and this one will be long because uh i buy a lot of kindle books um but uh if you guys like seeing that let me know and what i'll do is i'll start doing like half of the month at a time for that but uh Rachel at the Shades of Orange made a comment uh, to, to a couple of us last night that because uh, we were talking about uh, some books that we had picked up off of, uh, and I'll, I'll I'll plug this uh, Thirteen Horror Street, Thirteen uh, Horror Street dot com I believe it is. It's if you know what if you know BookBub, um, it's kind of like BookBub for horror books. They they every day send out a a, a newsletter that has some books that you can get on Kindle for free or for like 99 cents. Uh, so it features a lot of indie horror authors. Um, and a couple of us were talking about um, th some books that we had picked up from there. And Rachel made the comment that, that she'd like us to do Kindle hauls so that she can see what we've, <laughs> what we've picked up. Uh, so, and, and I have done that in the past, both in a, my weekend books video and on a separate video. So I do want to, I do want to do uh, a Kindle book haul video. So uh, so that's what's coming up f uh, for me on the channel. Um, I, I may be picking up another Bram Stoker first novel winner. I don't, soon, I don't know. Like I said, I'm starting to get into more of a literary mood. I still, I still have the horror mood, uh, which is good because I, I have, I have some horror reads that I need to, that I need to do. Um, so, but the literary fiction mood is creeping in, especially as we, especially as the weather's getting warmer, it's getting nice outside. I'm starting to feel more like reading some literary fiction. Um, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> that's it for me. Thank you to all my subscribers. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. I'm happy to have you. If you like what you've seen, hit the subscribe button so that you know when I hit, so that you know when I make new videos. And I will see you all in the next video.